Welcome back to another video. I know I've been gone for a really long time. If you guys really want to know why, you can leave it in the comments below and I can make a, you know, small dedicated video as to why I was gone for such a long time. But I'm back now and I'm happy to be making this video for you. So what is this video about today? As you can see from the description, I'm comparing two different cameras. Now, let me just give you a backstory as to how all of this came about. In the last year, I've been doing a lot of photography and uh, for my personal work, as I described in my previous videos, I would use the A6300 um, as well as the Sigma 30 millimeter 1.4 lens. Again, for my personal work. For my professional work, I would use this, the A7 III and uh, the Tamron 28 to 75. I guess it's the staple combination of everyone who shoots the A7 III. Anyways, I really, really like the results that come out of the a7 III. It's a fantastic camera. I have no complaints about it. It's literally, it was the best camera of its time and it's still, you know, a very top contender today. However, I was a little bit unsatisfied with my setup for my personal work. Now I know I could use my a7 III in my personal work, but uh, I want to keep a camera to shoot, you know, my professional work that I get paid for. And then I want to have something separate that I, don't have to worry as much about. So I started to look. Last thing I want to say is that this video was actually shot several months ago. Since then, I've actually found the solution to my needs and I'm actually shooting with that camera right now, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. I'm going to save that for my next video, which is going to be a comparison with the camera that I just bought versus the A6300. And uh, so look forward to my next video. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss out when I show you what I ended up doing. Ooh, one thing that I forgot. Unexpectedly, this video revealed things that I had completely missed and it was really good that I did this comparison. Look forward to the end of this video when I reveal the things that I discovered about this comparison. We'll see you then.
So yesterday we did architecture and uh, street photography. Obviously that's not my forte, but I wanted to try it out. Today I've got my friend here, Leticia. And we're gonna be doing some portraits. We might do a few things outside, a few things inside, but knowing that I'm a portrait photographer, I just wanted to show you the differences between the two cameras when it comes to portrait photography. So let's do this. All right, so thank you very much for watching that video. I'm just gonna summarize this video with a few of my thoughts. So, as I was saying, I ex unexpectedly learned a few things from doing this comparison. Number one, I've forgotten how slow shooting with a DSLR is. Now, I understand that this camera was limited a little bit because I couldn't use the OVF, which would have been much faster than using the live view mode and this Nikon, but unfortunately, because it wasn't working, that's why I couldn't use it, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video. But here's the thing. It's not just the autofocus speed that I was concerned with. It's just like the overall handling, having a look through the OVF, not necessarily knowing what your picture is going to be like. And so therefore, sometimes, you know, you would shoot, look down, see your settings, you know, switch it up a little bit, shoot again, chimp, check your settings again, modify, shoot again. That whole experience when I first used to shoot with DSLRs, I completely forgotten about it. And I think I've been spoiled by mirrorless cameras in the fact that, you know, before you take your first shot, you could do a lot of adjustments and get yourself 
99% of the way there before you even take your first shot. So that is something I had taken for granted and it became something that I realized that I definitely want in the camera that I'm going to purchase to replace my A6300. So yes, uh, the camera is a fantastic camera. I really enjoyed shooting it. If you were to pick up one today, I would say people who are shooting either landscapes or studio should pick up this camera because, you know, with its autofocus, though it isn't the fastest, it's still fantastic and still good enough to get perfect studio portraits as well as landscape shots. For everybody else, I wouldn't necessarily recommend this camera. But again, in terms of the colors, the colors are fantastic. I always like night ground colors. Um, in terms of, you know, the picture quality, it's fantastic. 36 megapixels, it's still up there. Most full frame cameras these days are actually 24 to 26 megapixels. And so at this point in time, that sensor is not necessarily obsolete. You're just not gonna get, you know, the fastest experience shooting this camera. Obviously it's not gonna be a great camera for video. So you wouldn't wanna go with the D800 for video at all. As I was saying, the Nikon D800, as well as the D800E, which is the same camera, just without the anti-aliasing filter, those would be perfect for landscape photographers and studio photographers. Basically, any type of photography where the subject is not moving a lot, they can be static. This camera would be perfect for, and it's still a great buy in 2020. For myself, however, like I said, I'm not going with the camera. I would actually consider purchasing one if I come into some extra money because I do a lot of studio portraits and so this would be beneficial. The 30 megapixels are really great. The colors are really great out of camera. So I would like to have one. I might pick it up down the road, but as for now, for my personal camera, I did not go with it. So look forward to my next video where I reveal what camera I did purchase to replace my A6300. I'll do a little comparison between my A6300 versus that camera. And to, to some of you who know me personally, um, it might come as a bit of a surprise to you, but I think it's a decent camera and it will fulfill my needs. It's not the perfect camera because there is no such thing, but it will fulfill my needs for my personal work. Anyways, guys, again, thank you so much for watching this video. So happy to be back making YouTube videos and look forward to my next video coming soon. Bye.